right, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about ChatGPT and how to utilize ChatGPT to create cases so that you can kind of quiz yourself on the approach to the patient with any type of diagnosis. Um, I, I took some time over the past few weeks to really uh, hone in on the type of prompts needed to type into ChatGPT in order to get it to behave like we want for this type of activity. Now, as you know, ChatGPT is out there and it's here to stay. And I think instead of fighting it, especially when it comes to students and utilization in the classroom, outside of the classroom, I think the best thing to do is just embrace it and move forward with it, trying to find new and innovative ways to learn and to make learning fun. So this activity we're going to pilot uh, this week in class and so I just wanted to give some basic instructions as to how to utilize ChatGPT and how to input this prompt in order to uh, do the activity so it, even if you don't you know come to my class you can do this at home uh, just by having your own ChatGPT open and using these prompts so the first thing you want to do is go to ChatGPT and create an account if you don't already have one. I used my Gmail account and paired it with it uh, to uh, authorize or authenticate myself so that I could create my own ChatGPT account. Right now it's completely free, so make sure that, that you go ahead and do that first. All right. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a brand new chat window in ChatGPT. And we're gonna go step by step on these instructions, inputting them so that we can perform this activity. And essentially what this activity is, is we are going to ask ChatGPT to develop a vignette or a clinical case about one of the topics of our choosing. And then from there, it's gonna be kind of like a 21 questions, but really only 10, where we get to ask questions, uh, diagnostic questions, um, laboratory, procedural questions, anything we want, physical exam findings, uh, to our simulated patient. And from there, we'll gather the information needed to make a diagnosis, and then we will also come up with a treatment plan. So the first thing we're gonna do, open up a new chat in ChatGPT, and we're gonna begin by introducing ourselves. So I'm gonna type in, I am a physician assistant student, or if you're a medical student, a nurse practitioner student, nursing student, whatever kind of medical student you are, a PA student, you'll type that in. I am a blank student in whatever phase of training, didactic, clinical, um, so that the AI knows where you are in your training and at what depth they should be introducing these um, materials to you. Uh, second step, and I took a lot of time to kind of, not perfect, because nothing's ever perfect, but um, to really concentrate this prompt and make it efficient. So, so you're gonna wanna copy and paste this in word for word. Um, and if you're not covering GI topics, you can always you know, take these out and plug in any diagnosis uh, that you're covering. These are the diagnosis we cover week one. And so those are the ones that I have here as potential cases. Um, one thing I found early on when I was trying to develop this prompt is that uh, they wanted to give us the diagnosis in the vignette. Like when they were presenting the case, they said, oh, and by the way, the patient has this. And I was like, no, no, that defeats the purpose. So I had to put in here, do not disclose a diagnosis. So that's a very important step. Um, and then I'm telling the AI, that we only want to be given 10 potential questions that we can ask it in order to uh, come up with a diagnosis. In just a minute, I'll give you an example of one, vi one vignette that I worked through on ChatGPT. Um, after we've gathered up information, it's gonna prompt us to give a treatment. So <clears throat> um, after this, after you prompt it, ChatGPT will say, great, here's your case. We'll give you a case and then you have up to 10 questions to ask it to try to come up with a diagnosis. And these questions <clears throat> can be any type of questions. It can be historical questions, you know, uh, is the patient a smoker? Uh, it could be a physical exam finding. What is the physical exam finding? Does the patient have rebound tenderness? What does the abdominal exam look like? You could ask anything like that. 
Um, and then for, you could ask a diagnostic question. So any type of imaging, procedures, laboratories, and it will provide that for you as well. Uh, remember that you only have 10 questions, so make sure that you're efficient in the type of questions that you ask. And then whether, whether you use all 10 or not doesn't really matter. But uh, after the end of that, you'll go ahead and say, you know, I am ready to make my diagnosis. Does the patient have? And then give the diagnosis. If you're correct, ChatGPT will applaud you, tell you great job. Now, considering that diagnosis, what treatment regimen would you suggest? It'll ask you. And then you'll go ahead and type in the proposed uh, treatment regimen based on the diagnosis that you came up with. And then, you know, anything from there, you know, the sky's the limit when it comes to AI. So you can, you know, remodel this instead of, di di instead of um, you know, treatments, you might put in something more pathway like risk factors or other things. And it could be anything. This is just something to kind of start exploring AI uh, and ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and look at um, a case that I did just before coming to this. Let's take a look at this case. So again, just like we said at the beginning, I typed in first, I'm a PA student in the didactic phase of training. And it's saying, well, that's great. You know, it kind of knows where I'm coming from. And then from there, I copied and pasted word for word the prompt and they are ready to give us a case. So they gave us a case, 56 year old male, ER, progressive dyspnea to both solids and liquids over the past several months. Sensation of getting stuck in his chest. Also reports occasional regurge of undigested food, especially after meals, and has not had any significant weight loss, chest pain, or heartburn. Not saying we have 10 questions to figure out a diagnosis, okay? And so my first question, so what's paying too close attention? Uh, um, was, is the problem worsening? Well, it literally says right here, it's progressive, but I didn't pay too close attention. I kind of wasted a question there, but it said, yes, it said progressively worsening. So, okay, I kind of wasted that one. Uh, moving on, I asked, uh, has he tried any medications? They said, yeah, he's tried some over-the-counter antacids, some relief, but not significant improvement. And then here's where you could ask some physical exam findings. You know, does he have any oral lesions, any candidal type lesions in the mouth, you know, anything. Sky's the limit, you get 10 questions. Uh, but I decided to skip straight to the EGD uh, just because I didn't really want to ask a whole bunch of physical exam questions, not usually that great for upper GI symptoms. But either way, um, I asked about um, EGD. Yes, the patient has had an EGD. Well, I guess I didn't ask right. If so, what is the result? So I said, what was, what was the result? and it showed um, the esophagus had a lack of peristalsis, it's unable to relax properly, retain food particles in the esophagus. So I'm like, light bulb, ding! I'm thinking, okay, this could be something. And so then I followed up the question with what I thought, what I think to be is the confirmatory test for the diagnosis I have as my working diagnosis, which is esophageal manometry. Yes, patient had it and it showed the same thing. And to me, that was the confirmatory test that I needed to make my diagnosis. I don't think I quite used 10 questions. I probably used one, two, three, four, five, five of the 10. Uh, and I said, I'm ready to make my diagnosis. Does the patient have achalasia? And chat GBC, yes, based on those findings, that is consistent. So now please feel free to propose a treatment. So then I went ahead and typed in what I would think would be my approach to treatment, which would be lifestyle modifications, um, I also mentioned medical management is not very beneficial. I, I mentioned two procedures that could be done, balloon dilation, Botox injection, and last but not least, if no improvement, there are potential surgical corrections, including POM and a Heller myotomy. And JetGBT is being the great cheerleader that it is, said excellent analysis and confirmed what I said. And so from here, I mean, you could ask it to give you some multiple choice questions on the topic matter. You could ask it to come up with another vignette with different, you know, a, another exercise. Um, and for the most part, I've tried this several different times with brand new uh, ChatGPT windows, and most of the time it works out great, just like this. Occasionally, you'll get a ChatGPT bot that has kind of a different personality, and they'll kind of word things differently, or they won't quite, um, comply with what you really want them to do. 
Um, and so I found that if that happens, just open a new window and start over uh, because sometimes it's kind of crazy how each window kind of has its own personality to it. Um, but I think from the prompt that we've created, we've really honed into the activity and what we're trying to get out of it. I don't know about y'all, but this is so fun and I'm so excited to kind of explore new opportunities to learn and to use this new technology to the fullest potential. So uh, give it a try, you know, before you come to class or, you know, if you just want to kind of take a look at it, uh, maybe you can come up with something even better and you can, you know, share it with me either in class or you can include it in the comment section here. Um, just different ways to learn and I think the more we share with each other, the better we'll be off you know, learning and, um, you know, just being uh, clinicians, you know, so uh, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped get you ready for this activity. Hopefully we do it in class and hopefully it's a success. I'd love to share, um, kind of circle back, follow up and share how it went on, on day, day one of this new pilot venture. So um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we'll see you soon.